Hey, this is Matt with Tips for Truckers over here. And today is common misconceptions and things you should know before you have your uh, have a solar system. Now, I know this is a trucking channel, but I also do van life. But I see a lot of trucks over here with solar panels on their roof. And there's a lot of things out here that a lot of people don't know, a lot of misconceptions, and a lot of things that people are doing wrong. The number one thing is, I see so commonly on trucks is the flexible uh, solar panels. Now, those are great for uh, applications where it's hard to mount things, but if you can, get yourself a solid one where there is glass and everything because the idea is you got to elevate it because you get airflow underneath. These things work most efficiently around 70 degrees or something like that. And on top of those trucks' roof, I mean, it's man, it's got to be 150 degrees or so. But what it ends up doing is you actually melt the silicone and ruin the panels, and they don't last like uh, two years or so. But if you can, if you have a flat spot on your roof, that's where I'd mount the uh, solar panels. So that's the number one thing. The number two thing is, and this is the biggest misconception, you can't just buy solar panels and be good. You need wires, you need an inverter, and you gotta, the first thing you gotta figure is, am I going off-road or am I going grid tie? Now, or off-grid or grid tie. Now, if you're in a truck, if you're in a semi-truck, van life, anything like that, obviously you're gonna be completely off-grid, like me. That's gonna cost you a lot more. I would say probably at least two to three times as much. Now, I'm not even joking with you. Because with grid tie, you just get the solar panels, and what you could do is you could get what's called a grid tie inverter if you have a small setup. And it'll just give you 1,000 watts or up to, you know, 1,000 watts. You could just plug it into a plug outlet, actually, and, and feed it into there. To my understanding, do your research. But um, give you, you know, a couple hundred watts save you a little bit money on uh, electricity very cheap cost effective way to just save a little bit of money on your power bills but it, you're not going it's not going to be zero if you want your power bills to be zero it's really going to cost you a lot more than if you were to just supplement it so that's that's another big thing but if you're going off off grid you need your solar panels you need wires batteries power inverter solar um controller charge controller uh, you need kill switches fuses all kind of things and the wires are really really not cheap and let me explain to you why and this goes with the other this is probably a really big misconception as well you have to mount your solar panels closely to where you convert the AC or close to your battery bank the thing is, as we all know from, you know, learning about Edison, DC is very inefficient over distances. And you have to get a really thick wire if you want it really uh, efficient. Now, I just got 10 gauge wire on this. I got a little extension. But as you can see, I could unplug that extension and, and uh, put just this short one here, put it on the side of my trailer there. And it'll get about 10 times the juice as with this extension. But since I'm parking it at home for a week, it just needs a, um, a amp or so to keep batteries topped off. So that's a, that's a real big thing. But if I'm, you know, boondocking or whatever, nice day out and everything, I'll just throw the solar panels right there, plug it directly into there, and I'll get about 10 or 12 amps or so which will really charge my batteries up quick. That'll keep up with my fan and uh, and my lights and, and my water pump and all that mess. But uh, where this, uh, that's not, that's just going to keep your batteries topped off. Of. But you have to get your solar, your solar panels close to where your batteries are and use as thick a gauge of wire as you can. And speaking of that, your battery bank you're going to need a lot more battery than you think if you're going completely off-grid. 
because you don't know if it's going to be a sunny day or whatever. So you actually have to probably get, I'd say, you know, 50% more capacity than what you think you, you need for um, a uh, on a nice day, ideal day, and ideal electricity consumption. But some days you're going to use more and all that, and you don't want to run your batteries low. That That's really bad for them. So that's another big expense is uh, is getting enough batteries. And it's, it's really a balance because, I mean, if you run them all the way down, you're going to have to replace your batteries a lot more and probably would have been cheaper just to get a couple extra batteries in the first place. So you got to don't underestimate the amount of batteries you need. But here's the other thing. And I did the, I mentioned this in another video is your power inverter. If you run an air conditioner or electric heater or anything like that, electric water heater, you are going to need a really really big power inverter. I got a 3000 watt. And here's the thing. It it'll it'll do 3000 watts peak, so it'll it'll run a microwave you know 1500 watts just fine but if you're running the air conditioner for more than an hour or so even at a thousand watts at 700 watts it starts to get hot and it'll and it'll um it'll put it go into protection mode and shut off for a, a minute or two and that's a pain so really you got to get a bit way bigger inverter than you think so if you're at a house it's I mean you're gonna spend thousands and thousands of dollars on on two you know seven thousand watt ten thousand watt inverters is really what you're gonna need if you really want to run a house correctly and you're probably gonna need uh, close to ten thousand dollars worth of batteries if you want to run a, a whole house and now you're kind of seeing why all this video is kind of tying together where you think you just got to buy couple hundred dollars worth of solar panels or a thousand dollars worth of solar panels and, and then you're good no so if you're gonna do it on your house I would get it recommend getting it professionally done because they'll know exactly how much you're gonna need at a time you know for your consumption the, how your house is and and they'll do it a little bit overkill which is really what you want it's gonna save you money in in the long run because little mistakes, I can afford to make little mistakes on my tiny house trailer here. But if you're doing like a $50,000 setup on your house, you want it done right. I mean, if you're going completely off grid. And now you can really, really see why I'm saying if you're doing it for a house, do a grid die. But definitely keep all this in mind when you're doing uh, a semi truck too or a tiny house like I got. Samantha with Tips for Truckers. Have a great day.